Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners meeting for February 22nd, 2022, which is 2-22-22. Um, and it's a good morning. Uh, we'll begin the uh, meeting by asking Father Ron Camarda from St. Monica Ch Catholic Church to come up and do the invocation. And then Commissioner Rawls will lead us in the pledge. Um, I've asked uh, Father Camarda, uh, Putnam County and Crescent City lost a hero uh, last Thursday. Uh, Clarence Pooh Bear Williams was killed in a single vehicle car crash. Pooh Bear Williams was uh, probably one of Crescent City's finest athletes. He gained over 5,000 yards in his four-year career. Uh, went on to play at Florida State from 93 to 96 and in a brief pro career with the Buffalo Bills. He returned home to give back to Crescent City, mentor kids, teach, and coach for 20 years. He was, as my wife said in the paper, he was truly a gentle giant and a tremendous loss to Putnam County and Crescent City. So Father will remember Clarence Williams before the prayer with a moment of silence. So if you're able, please stand. Go ahead and breathe in and to breathe out. Breathe in and hold it. Keep holding it and now let it go. As we remember Clarence Pooh Bear Williams, great coach, breathing in and breathing out. The invocation is calling on God. In the Navy, I was called, the motto was vocati ad servitium, called to serve. And we're all here called to serve. Whether we're elected or citizens, we're called to serve and to represent all people. We breathe in, we breathe out. In the Battle of Fallujah, before I got there, we were on a convoy. And I was asked to pray, and I think I had to go to the bathroom four times at least. It was in 2004, just before the Battle of Fallujah. Breathing in and breathing out. All I could think of was the third verse of the Star Spangled Banner. O oh, thus be it ever when free men and women should stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heavens rescued lands praise the power that has made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must if our cause it is just and this be our motto in God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner in triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The convoy we were going on the night before was hit. People died, people were injured. We were doctors and nurses and corpsmen and sailors and marines. And when we were about to go, we were scared. The first one's always the hardest. When we call on God to ask us to be here, we ask God to be opening our hearts so that we can represent all people, even those people who cannot vote for us, people who hate us, 
people who mistreat us. And yet that's what we're called to serve. And if it means to lay down our lives, it means it. In the next couple of months, I experienced 1,500 casualties, 81 deaths, and 12 men and women died in my arms. They were Buddhists and Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Christians, agnostic, atheist. And whenever they came in to Bravo Surgical, the field hospital, we just asked them to breathe in and breathe out. We're present here today and our decisions make a cho choice. Our decisions affect people, not just in this country, but globally. Oh God, help us to see, help us to really see. Every night when we go to bed in the military, whether you're serving in the battle or not, we've all said, I pledge allegiance to the flag. <coughs> One country indivisible with liberty and justice for all, even those in the prison, we make decisions for them. Those addicted, those incapable of reading, those with terrible childhoods. So every night we pray, and we usually hear it only at funerals. But if Clarence, who coached Pooh Bear, he made a difference. He made a huge difference. He made a difference because he loved all and coached the whole team, no matter what they believed in. And that's what we do here, elected officials, because sometimes our decisions end up putting us in war and hopefully in peace. Thanks and praise for our days. Neat the sun, neat the stars, neat the sky. As we go, this we know. God is nigh whenever we're afraid. Know that God is right here with us. as we recognize all people. Our hymn turns into an amazing grace and how sweet the sound that saved and set us free. I once was lost and many of us have been lost and now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. As we call on God at this time for this meeting that we would see, in order to see God, you see all people I've seen them in Latin America, and knowing that it's a country, sometimes we affect why people are running away from gangs, from guns that we have supplied. We do not make profit. <coughs> we listen to the prophets. And so the last song, and at the very end of it, after I play it, just simply say amen, yes. I will ask you, God, to open up my eyes to see you clearly, that everything I do or say, that everything I do or say is for all people, not just for those who voted for me.
grace, how sweet the sound that saved and set me free. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see, oh, I see. Amen. Amen. Hoorah. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Father Ron, for that very inspirational prayer, Father God, and then um, also Commissioner Rawls. Uh, gentlemen, our first item of business is item two, approval of the minutes of the January 25th, 2022 Board of County Commissioner's regular meeting and our regular workshop. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the two items on the work on the minutes. Second. We've got a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey, proper second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, this is a fun part of our meetings uh, when we're able to honor or recognize uh, employees or individuals uh, for their outstanding service to Putnam County. So we'll move down to presentations and I'll ask Jay Tilton to come up with staff. Uh, recognize Ms. Elizabeth Beth Middlebrook for the January Employee of the Month. Thank you, commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to come up here and recognize Miss Elizabeth Middlebrook as uh, our employee of the month for Putnam County. She said she was nervous. I said, all you gotta do is be like the Madagascar penguins, just smile and wave, boys, <laughs> smile and wave. I'll handle the rest, so. Oh, uh, you know, in the, in the garbage business, we call ourselves the true environmental stewards because if it piles up, it ain't good for nobody. So we give an avenue for the garbage to be taken care of. And Miss Middlebrook's job is she handles the Huntington location down there, our convenience site, and makes sure that all the garbage gets loaded up into the dumpsters. And then we, and then coordinates um, with our team to get them picked up. And she does a wonderful job of that. She keeps her station clean. Um, she's good to her customers. She gets them in and out on a regular basis. and. Uh, we get nothing but compliments on her efforts. She also helps us with some environmental um, tasks that we have down there. We have a, a vacuum system and some other things that we have that she helps take care of and watches over and lets us know when we have, when it's not working properly and doing so. Her attitude is a breath of fresh air in the garbage business because not all the time do people have the best attitude being around <coughs> trash. Um, but in the end, you know, even though we're in the garbage business, it doesn't, have a, it doesn't have to be a dump that she works at and she makes it where it's not. And we're thankful for that in all things. So with that being said, we would like to present Miss Elizabeth Middlebrook with this check for $100 for being the Putnam County BOCC Employee of the Month. All right. Correction. Not convenient, but okay. 
<laughs> the collection table. Yeah, or if you live close. <laughs> More convenient to throw it on the side of the road. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jay. Uh, we'll move down to uh, the next recognition and ask Mr. Tim Parker and his staff to come up. Um, appraiser employee recognition for Beverly Carter. Is this correct? 35 years? She started when she was 10. I'm going to say, Beverly, you must have started when you were 10 years old. <laughs> they had a typo on our first uh -huh. agenda, and it was 25 years. And I said, well, yeah, I can see maybe 25 years, but 35, I said, that's the typo. So, mm, no. Uh, so I'd like to thank the county commissioners and the citizens of Putnam County for allowing me the privilege to recognize one of our employees for their 35 years of service. Beverly Carter joined our office December 30th, 1986 as a records management specialist and was later promoted to position of tangible personal property records man management specialist two and is also our office's records management liaison officer. This is a very important position dealing with public records requests. Beverly has earned her certified Florida evaluator designation after completing the coursework and tests associated with the designation. Beverly also acts as our ESF-5 Damage Assessment Coordinator at the Emergency Operations Center and has spent many sleepless hours doing her job so that the citizens of Putnam County could help get their life back to normal. The certificate we have for her says, Certificate of Appreciation, we hereby express our sincere appreciation to Beverly Carter for outstanding service and contributions to the citizens of Putnam County for 35 years and award this certificate from the Putnam County Property Appraiser, Placa, Florida, this 22nd day of February, 2022. Beverly's husband, Jimmy, along with several coworkers are here today to help honor her. Please join me in congratulating Beverly for her 35 years of service to the citizens of Putnam County. Crews, let's stay up here. Let's stay up here. It's not that we don't want to be around you. We're going to stay up here. Can you be seen? So 10 years old, you started? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's the story I'll tell. Great job. <laughs> there were no child labor laws back then. <laughs> right. 35 years, wow. Okay, thank you, Mr. Parker, and congratulations, Beverly. Uh, we'll move down to item C, and I'll ask uh, Ms. Wendy Musseline and uh, Sharon Treen to come forward. Um, this is a special award, uh, Woman of the Year in Agriculture by the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. There's a theme this morning, this uh, breathe in, breathe out, breath of fresh air from the garbage. This is a true breath of fresh air. Um, this, this woman and what she's brought to Putnam County is fantastic. And rather than me talk, I'd really rather show you. Um, she was presented this award at the Florida State Fair last Monday by the um, commissioner, the Ag Commissioner of the state of Florida. So this is a statewide award. And uh, I think once you see the video, once you see the video, Yep, find the. <laughs> I need IT help. Where did he go? He's coming. Oh, here it is. There. It popped up for me. Is there sound? <laughs> As a kid, I was always interested in pulling things apart, pushing things together, and farming gave me the opportunity to tinker. As a farmer, uh, I like to say you're a MacGyver. 
And so you have to be able to, to have every trade under your belt and have some, some knowledge about everything. And so from a young age, uh, I felt like farming gave me the opportunity to expand my horizons in my mind. Angela Tenbrook is a fourth generation farmer. On her farm, Worldwide Aquaponics in East Palatka, Florida, she carries on the family tradition of hydroponic and aquaponic farming. I say four generations because starting with my great grandfather, we began working inside of greenhouses. So for four generations, we've been working and farming differently. Aquaponic farming takes advantage of the symbiotic relationship between fish and plants. The fish waste provides nutrients to the plants, and the plants filter and clean the water, which is then returned to the fish tanks. We refer to our water inside of our greenhouses as soil water, because we have all the components that is needed for plants to grow in a very hospitable, beautiful environment all the time. Utilizing controlled environments, aquaponics allows for crops of the highest quality to be grown from seed to harvest in as little as 30 days, with a fraction of the land and water needed for traditional farming. And being a closed loop system means no effluent, fertilizers, or pesticides ever leaves the farm. This is very important to Angela because worldwide aquaponics is only a short walk away from the St. Johns River. Phosphorus has the potential to harm this river. The way Angela is doing things, she doesn't have to pick a rate. She doesn't have to say, I want to apply 100 pounds of phosphorus per acre in order to make my potatoes productive. She gets to say, I'm going to produce phosphorus naturally through my fish waste, and I'm going to give my plants the opportunity to take up as much phosphorus as they want. And what they don't want to use will just get recycled back into the waste stream. And that is a beautiful model for our future. She was able to shut down almost, you know, three and a half million gallons of water a day of discharge into this estuary. And that is hugely powerful. That, that affects us, um, everybody from right up through Hastings all the way up into Jacksonville and, and the estuaries all the way around Jacksonville and the St. John's River. Angela's aquaponics is groundbreaking in, in all senses of, of how she goes about it, from the way she staffs it to the way she cultivates the plants. She's basically restructuring the way uh, you can utilize a property like this or a farm. While farming has been a part of her family tradition, Angela started her professional career as an educator, spending 15 years in Duval County Public Schools teaching science and health through agriculture. Drawing upon her farming background, she introduced students to hydroponics. Uh, I came in as a science teacher, uh, then moved into administration, and then from administration went back to teaching. Um, and so I, uh, I spent a career, uh, 15 uh, school years, uh, in education. In 2013, Angela began work on a new project, Traders Hill Farm which would utilize an abandoned chicken barn and repurpose it into a fully-fledged aquaponics farm. Once described as a science fair project, Traders Hill Farm proved to be an unmitigated success, growing from a 5,000 unit production to 155,000 when she sold the business in 2017. Well, I'm super proud of what Traders Hill Farm is today and what we accomplished there. Uh, we were the first group in the world to do SQF certification, which put commercial aquaponics on the, on the books. So we were the first commercial aquaponics facility to get food safety certification. Every large aquaponics facility has followed suit since. Um, I'm proud to say that that was us. Combining her skills as a farmer and educator, in 2015, Angela founded the leading edge consultation company, Aqua Hortis working with people worldwide to build or repurpose facilities and operate similar aquaponic systems. One of the mottos that she's talking about all the time is feed the world. 
And this is exactly what she is doing. When she sees that some people are uh, short of uh, resources, she thinks about how to get it to them, but not how to give them the supplies, but how to help them to create the supplies for themselves. You know, when we're able to teach people how to do things, it helps them to go on and teach another. This is a woman who has touched multiple countries across the world, right? She's got over 200 aquaponics initiatives that she's been involved with everywhere from here in Florida to Prague to the British uh, Virgin Islands. Angela's passion for sustainability and community outreach cannot be overstated. In 2013, she launched the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Excellence and Conservation, or CSAEC, a nonprofit network of farmers working to develop and share best practices for more sustainable agriculture and increased access to fresh produce in underserved communities. She's somebody who, when she sees a challenge, she's all ready to jump in and try to solve it, right? And so food insecurity in Northeast Florida, as it is throughout our country, is a significant issue. And so it makes sense to me that that would be a strong focus for Angela. In 2018, Angela's passion to defeat food insecurity inspired her to build an urban farm in Jacksonville's White House community. Foodery Farms was a prototype educational piece to be able to put into Jacksonville's Northwest Jacksonville um, to see what would happen if we put a farm prototype in a community that needed food. And um, through that work, we got involved with Feeding Northeast Florida and a variety of food and security advocates. Taking the idea one step further, Angela conceived of a way to make fresh produce available to underserved communities any time of day. Fresh produce vending machines. Why can't we put produce vending machines in? So hell, I went and pitched it. I went and pitched it, won the local competition. I went and pitched it, won the state. I won the Guidewell Block by Block Challenge for food insecurity. They gave me $20,000. I built the thing. Throughout the pandemic, Angela and her volunteers with CSAEC and We Care Jax have packed and distributed thousands of boxes and bags of fresh produce to seniors and families in need, as well as healthcare patients suffering from cancer and other chronic disease. Those most vulnerable people who cannot risk venturing into public to simply get food. Right at the time that the world shut down because of the pandemic, uh, typical of Angela, uh, she decided that there was more that needed to be done in helping um, families and elders and young people who all of a sudden found themselves um, struggling to find access to food, especially fresh food. So she reached out to her network of folks and said, if I pull this together, will you be a part of it? Will you be a part of helping to make sure this gets in the right hands, in the right bellies? I got a call from her and she told me, hey, uh, I'm about to start this farm to door project and I'm gonna help people that need food. And I'm thinking in the middle of a crisis, right, her eyes are still to the North Star. The people that showed up to that in the middle of the pandemic, to come together where everybody else was trying to stay far away from each other. This group of people came together and did some really, really great things. If that doesn't speak to somebody's character and their leadership qualities and their ability to inspire people, I don't know what does. It was an amazingly powerful thing that happened and I think really speaks to who Angela is as, a, as, as an individual. Today, Angela continues to feed and educate as many people as she can garnering the same respect from her employees that she does from the community. People always say she'd give the shirt off the back for you. No, she does give the shirt. It wouldn't, it's not that she would, she does. And I mean, whatever you need, she's there, you know? So it's, it's nice to have a, an owner boss like that. I was living on where Traders Hill currently is. I was living on the property and she started the farm and I kept going over and bugging her every day for a job until she gave me a job. We're very good friends. We're not just employer-employee. We're very good friends. She expects a lot out of us, but she, she cares. And I've been in different places where you work for somebody who 
doesn't have to care for the business like she does and that makes all the difference in the world to me. Angela also serves as mayor of her adopted hometown, the beachside community of Marineland, Florida. Marineland is the most remarkable place you'll ever live. It is 200 acres of native Florida, never been touched. It is along the ocean and along the river. So you are surrounded by pristine, level, class two waterways that are most amazing. You can live, work, and play there. Whether Angela is at home in Northeast Florida or on the other side of the globe, she will continue her quest to end food insecurity. As I close my eyes for the last time, I would be satisfied to know that millions of people didn't go hungry because of the work, my life's work. I would feel that I met my big, hairy, audacious goal that in the future, we don't have people going to bed starving or hungry. They have nutrition and they are properly nourished so that we can have a better world and a better planet. Yep, I think we should give a round of applause. And bring Angela up here. Come on up here, Angela. She's been a lot of places, but we're thankful to have her in Putnam County. She has taken the lead on the Putnam County Farm to School uh, project, and um, we are doing agritourism to her farm every other month. So we are taking six visits, 30 people per visit, $30 a person. I brought the flyers today for anyone that wants a personal tour. Um, we are going to continue to rock Putnam County, and I just want to, if you guys want to ask her any questions or if she wants to say anything to you guys. Right. Thank you. Please make some comments. Um, I, I just want to remind you that uh, we're Putnam first, and so um, no matter what, where we go or what we do, we're Putnam first. So our farm is home-based here. You know, you're going to see movement uh, throughout the country with us. Um, you know, there's a couple things that I think that's um, important that we talk about for our citizens. Um, Putnam County has the uh, interesting distinction of um, having some food insecurity issues. And so with forward thinking leaders such as Nikki Hawthorne and Wendy and, and folks like this, we're gonna turn our, country, our community around. And so uh, Nikki has fully uh, bought into our buying our produce um, and so we're trying to encourage other farmers to join us in, in serving the best produce in, grown in our county for our kids. That's Putnam first. Second thing is, is that, um, you know, we hire uh, men and women who are coming out of veterans court, um, who are coming out of incarceration, or people who just don't want to be, the people don't want to hire. Um, and so we're Putnam first. We're keeping those people, our people, working. Not, not folks, and there's nothing to be said about guest workers. We're keeping our people working. That keeps our economy circular and local. And so I want to remind you to always try to purchase our stuff first. You know, our salad greens cost a little bit more, but they were cut right there mm -hmm. just yesterday. And so uh, every Tuesday we have that opportunity for you to come in and purchase produce from us and other farmers. We aggregate um, on Monday evening. By on Monday evening, we have the aggregation of produce at our farm. And when you buy produce from us, if you pay full price for that bag, uh, families in the community, I mean, there are people here who can tell you that we have helped and push in produce uh, to the communities that serve folks that don't have the opportunity to necessarily pay full price. Um, and these are first cuts. And so, you know, um, my goal is to remain um, focused on feeding the, if we have a healthy community, we have healthy leaders, we have healthy, you know, lots of things happen. Um, in our community in the right way. So join us um, in buying our produce and join us on our agritourism days and sh push people our way. We're also looking to make sure that we continue to uh, evolve our farm. And so um, when you buy our produce, you're able for me to be able to push money back in to expand. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm asking you to buy our products, just as every other farmer is in our community. And so uh, my this opportunity has given me the space to be able to say, hey, buy first. This is, you know, Putnam first, 
America first type situation. So thank you. Thank you for always looking out for us. And um, just, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to everybody who uh, keeps coming back and looking and telling our story. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Rawls? <clears throat> First and foremost, you're going to need a big straw to drink out of that. <laughs> <laughs> the I, think you, I think if you take that to Corky Bills, they could fill it up for you. <laughs> they have a thing called a fishbowl. <clears throat> I'm going to Azalea, I think. <laughs> that's going to trump that. But um, <laughs> in all seriousness, I, the first time I met you was at Trinity Hill Farms, and I was part of the Regional Leadership Academy at the um, Regional Council. And I was really impressed by the operation you guys had. It, it, to me, it seemed like it was very scalable. Um, you know, the, the reuse of the water, the reuse of the fish, you know, growing the fish to size and, you know, being able to use that to some, provide protein. That's, I think when you look at the third world nations, that's the biggest thing is, um, I'm not a big leafy green eater myself. Um, I'm, I love meats, but uh, we, we need that. We need the sustainability. We need to stop putting the river. And um, the gentleman that's going to follow you up is going to be speaking about substance abuse and uh, folks uh, that, that are suffering with that. Um, and being able to take people from incarceration, giving them another opportunity, helps solve a problem that we have to deal with as a community. Um, so I, I congratulate you on your award, but I really congratulate you on your business and um, your, your uh, desire to, to uh, try to solve problems. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Harvey? Well, I have to echo thank you and appreciate all you do for Putnam County and, and for the world, basically. Um, it just takes one idea to get started. I have a few questions for you. Love the vending machine idea. I thought that was a big hit for me. I often wonder why, um, and I sit here sometimes and say, <coughs> it's hard to eat healthy. It really is, especially if you're on the run or if you don't have the money and it's expensive to do that. So where are these vending machines at and how do we get one where we need to get one? Well, uh, interesting, I have all the vending machines at, at the farm in, in, uh, in uh, East Palatka. Uh, we are looking for a place okay. uh, to put it and um, it, it doesn't take cash. It only takes a uh, credit card, EBT snap. Okay. Um, and uh, we've been looking at trying to form partnerships with people. Uh, so that people can access produce 24-7. And so the way that works is, is what we envision is, is we need two things, very low power and Wi-Fi. So we have looked at places like uh, schools, uh, boys and girls clubs. Uh, we've talked about Dollar General um, and so forth. So we're looking to place that machine, and uh, we're actually looking to raise money around getting more machines. Because here's the way it works for a farmer. The way it works for a farmer is to um, be able to, we get, we sell on the wholesale market. And if we sell on the wholesale market, we can actually uh, make uh, almost 200% more profit. And so we're looking to cost share. So we are profit share wherever we go. And so there's an opportunity for organizations to work with us to be able to put food where food is needed most. And so what we have found through our research, what that Guidewell Award did for us, was allow us to be able to research how long can we leave produce in there? Right. What are people seeking? What time of day? What's the average vent? The total addressable market in our city alone, based upon SNAP and EBT, if we just put it in a housing complex, is $16 million. Wow. Okay, and so, uh, and the machines, the whole setup costs around, if we do the economy of scale, we could actually get the machines cost lower. They built that, my specs. So it has a certain amount of humidity. It has a certain amount of gassing for the, there's a whole bunch of science that went into it. So we don't have them anywhere else. We've pulled it out of Jacksonville and put it at East Palatka to figure out where we're going to go next. So we're currently fundraising for that. Um, and so we know that that's, we, we know that that's the best way of, of getting food. We know that we need three. We need one for produce. We need one for dry goods and we need one for frozen items. So we've talked amongst, I'm actually uh, currently working with United Way and Florida Blue and Community Foundation to figure out where we can put one in Putnam um, and those three, uh, three block machines um, and so that people can access. And so what the process is, is that we're gonna continue on with our food uh, program on Tuesdays. Um, and then from that, the next year, we would do a commercial kitchen where we take all the seconds products and put them into soups, uh, sauces, and stuff like that that 
And then the next year is, is we put them into vending machines. And so the way we view that is, is that we've already started working with a group of young people who can actually uh, service these machines. So there's opportunity for more business, um, our, you know, sure. development. And so that's, we've actually written the plan. Um, and what we recognized was, is that we can, uh, by, if we were to put the machine, we keep getting people to come to the same locations where they're getting the less discounted food. They have an EBT and SNAP card. They're paying $5, wow. no matter what. They can actually use their EBT and SNAP card at that machine and get 100% more food with their EBT and SNAP because it's considered a farmer's market. Good deal. So we figured out a whole bunch of stuff so they can actually get more food for their, their card than traditionally has been seen. And it's a new way of thinking about farmer's markets. And I don't have to sit there as a farmer and say, I want to buy, want right, to buy. Right. It's just there. Right. Um, and so it helps. We buy from, you know, all the farms in the region. Sure. Um, and so anyway, I could digress for yeah. a long time about that. Let's but not. anyway, I have one more question. <laughs> what do you do with the fish when they reach a certain size? Um, so. Soon we'll be having a fish sale. The Kiwanis Club actually had a uh, fish fry uh, just ma last month. We, we send out fish. So we will be selling fish probably within the next four weeks. What kind of fish are they? <clears throat> we have high quality uh, tilapia. Tilapia. Yeah, okay. so we are growing uh, many, I, I think the folks at Kiwanis could probably tell you about the fact that it was a, it tastes like a beeline snapper. No, I get it. Yeah, yeah super, super clean, super yeah. um, not dirty and muddy tasting. So we'll be, we'll be pushing out probably a couple hundred pounds in the next four to five weeks. And the public buy that too? That's right. Good you, deal. On Tuesdays. One other thing, how can I, as a person, not to, and I don't mean this to self-promote, that's not what I'm talking about. How can people partner with you to help those that are in need? For example, maybe a bag of produce is, I don't know the cost of it, but how can we help sponsor that? So the way we would help, you would help sponsor it is our nonprofit, the 501C, a Farmer for Farmer program. Uh, you can donate uh, through that, or you can come to the farm and buy a bag and give a bag. Okay. So that would cost you, uh, basically the bags cost $25. Yeah. You get a bag, and then you pay 50 and somebody gets a bag. Somebody gets a bag. Um, and yeah. that's, a, you know, you can do a bag and a bag. Yeah. Um, and what we do is, is we push it into uh, Bread of Life. Um, we push it into, so Cliff Lida's group. Uh, gotcha. Uh, and a variety of others in the community. Well, thank you. Thank you again for all you do, and I appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Wendy, thank you so much for bringing her, and, and it's, this is quite a award and quite a, um, a uh, operation. This is very interesting. Do you know that there was somebody in Wallaca that was doing something similar to this almost 40 years ago? Mm -hmm. Eurotropic. I think they grew tomatoes down there. They did. For a while. Yeah, yeah so my... Uh, Step grandfather was uh, Deshane, and so uh, he was down there in Wilatka. He's been in Wilatka and all that area for for forty fifty years. All right. And so yeah, we've we've been following. We used to get fish from some of the folks down there. Okay. My great my great grandfather and my grandmother have been we've been farming like this for years. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna ask Ed Kilbrew wants to come up and say a couple of things. So and Wendy and and Sharon, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate this. It's very special. So here's the uh, agritourism. We're going to leave those. Yep. Yeah, we get a in a calendar. Though. Yeah, because we'll yeah, agritourism is featured by your very own Wendy Mussolini in August. So you can put the calendar on August all year. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're, we're gonna, when, Ed, when Ed's done, we're going to get a picture. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get a picture. Yeah. I don't want you to go anywhere because I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> um, Angela's just a beautiful person. She's, her heart is so big, and her mind is always working and doing things. Um, I was introduced to Angela by Taylor Douglas, imagine that. Um, he, he called me one day and asked me if I could go pick up some food and bring it back and, and distribute it. And I'm like, sure, where do you want me to distribute it? He said, anywhere you can. <laughs> and so Angela was very much on board with that. And she's been on board with us all the way through Epicure, and I'm not going to go there, but I'm just saying all the way. She's, she has given us 20 or 30-foot trailer loads of food. We take gooseneck trailers out there, and she just loads it up. And before all that came to pass, what we're trying to do with food, I was taking this food that she'd given and taking it to um, College Arms, Mellon Manor, all the, 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 those apartment complexes, and people were just coming out. And, Where do you get this food from, man? 
And um, she, week after week after week, she would she did when she was growing, it was coming out. She'd call me, "Hey Ed, I got I got stuff, I got stuff." And she's not only again like I mean like everything that's been portrayed about her in this video. She is very community minded. You see her in our community. You see her in our community. Everywhere I go, she's there. She's our Kiwanis Club. She came and you know she's all, all she's everything that that video says. And her heart is just so big. And um, I just wanted to say thank you from the community. Thank you, Ed. Let's give her one more hand. We'll get a picture. Okay, thank you. Next presentation, I'll ask Mr. Tyler Nolan, Emergency Planner for North Florida Regional Council for a presentation on the Overdose Summit. Well, Tyler, just think you have to follow that. I know. There you go. <laughs> that's something hard to follow. That's, that's so definitely wrong. sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Just to wake you up this morning. Perfect. All right, good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you this morning. Um, I'm here from the Northeast Florida Regional Council to tell you about an exciting opportunity that we have coming up for the region. Um, I'm going to show that switch is over. Okay. All right, um, at the direction of our board of directors, who actually uh, Commissioner Harvey is sitting as our current president at the moment, I um, mean Commissioner Jeff Rawls, um, it, as a result of the um, recent um, opioid pandemic and mental health crisis, um, this board thought it was a good idea and that it was a regional significance um, for the regional council to take a look at this issue um, and see what we can do as a region um, to address this issue. So one of the things um, that is a result of that is the educational summit on overdoses. Um, when this project and this um, direction was given by the board, um, regional council staff kind of got into it, did some research, and realized that there's something a little bit bigger going on here more than just opioids and fentanyl. Um, yes, those two substances are the direct result and why we're seeing a lot of deaths um, as a direct result of those substances. However, <coughs> the more underlying tone here is addiction and um, the mental health component that goes along with that. Um, so we came up with this idea of hosting a regional summit, um, an educational summit on overdoses um, to focus on addiction um, and then to focus more specifically on opioids and fentanyl because that is where we're seeing a lot of the death um, as a direct result of. Um, so one of the ways that we're going to look at this is we're going to address stigma head on. Um, we're going to talk about this um, issue right at the forefront um, and we're going to address it um, right from the get-go. The other piece of that is the mental health and substance use disorders. Um, that component to it, what role that plays, what role the neuroscience, um, how the brain chemically reacts to addiction, um, really addressing that. But then across all of our counties, there are a number of successful programs. Um, what are those programs that can be replicated across the region? You know, not everything may fit um, your exact population, and maybe it's just stealing the wheel or stealing a spoke um, from that wheel um, to address it and fit it into our communities better. And then also, what are our law enforcement partners seeing? What are our first responders seeing when they're out um, responding to these calls and these incidences? 
Um, so why is this important? Well, in 2021, during a national survey, 41 million Americans um, aged uh, 12 and older um, identified that they had a substance use disorder. But of those 41 million, only 4 million of those sought treatment. Um, so you can kind of infer there's probably three groups, and definitely, definitely more, um, but probably three groups that make up that number. Um, there's the group that isn't ready for recovery, um, and it will be coming on their time of when they become ready for recovery. Um, there's the group that is ready for recovery. Um, either stigma is playing a role in them seeking out that treatment, or they just don't know what type of treatment opportunities and things are available to them. Um, or there's the third group that they are ready for recovery, but they don't have access to one of these programs. Um, so really looking at those three groups more specifically. Um, between 2018 and 2019, over 2,000 people in Northeast Florida needed 911 medical services. As you all know, every time 911 is called, there's a cost associated with that. A lot of these individuals are probably repeat um, users of that service. I purposely leave the city of Jacksonville out of there because sometimes it's very easy for the city of Jacksonville's problems to overshadow some of our smaller communities. Um, when you add the city of Jacksonville into it, that's over 4,000 individuals in Northeast Florida needing 911 medical services. Um, so it's a cost um, on all of us as a community. Some of the topics to be covered when staff really got into this and really kind of determine what was the best route to take, um, the behavioral mental health side of it. What is going on um, with stigma? What is the addiction? So the first part of the summit will be that neuroscience piece, um, chemically what's going on in the brain, as well as the stigma associated to it. Um, and you'll see a name here in just a few seconds that um, you recognize that will be helping us address that issue. Um, the other piece of this is the supply and demand. What are our, what, what can we do to throw that demand off to keep to not let people want to keep chasing these substances. Um, what are our law enforcement partners seeing? How are they reacting? What are our first responders seeing? Um, getting that information firsthand. And then also, what are the funding opportunities? Everybody knows every time we implement a project, there's got to be some kind of funding source that goes with it. How are these projects funded across the region? How are our communities funding it? Um, but then also, what isn't um, required of funding? It's just a societal and a policy mindset of us as decision makers um, that we just kind of need to tweak the system just a little bit um, that doesn't result in a direct cost. Some of the highlighting of the successful projects, Project Save Lives is a project out of the city of Jacksonville where peer <coughs> services get matched up when somebody comes into the emergency room department um, as a result of a substance use. Um, your Putnam County Jail is doing some phenomenal things with the uh, inmate treatments um, and things that they're doing inside in their recovery pods, so we want to highlight some of those. Overdose data to action has been, is just an information resource, you know, getting proper data so you can target the specific communities that are seeing um, the greatest need for these types of services. And then we have two hospital systems signed on, um, UF uh, with the PAMI group, UF Health um, and Ascension will be coming in and saying how the hospital has learned, how they've changed their prescription practices and what they have done um, to adapt to our new understanding of the uh, opioids and um, other medication. Um, just a little glimpse of some of our speakers. Um, Nancy Russo is a name that, uh, that you all should recognize. She's very heavily in your um, opioid task force here. Um, she will be helping us address stigma head on. Um, Dr. Raymond Palm will be giving some speeches on the neuroscience of addiction. Um, and then you can see there some of the other speakers. We do have representation from the DEA will be present um, that will be coming to share that federal level um, information for us as well. Um, when and where it's going to be, it's going to be March 31st um, at World Golf Village in St. Augustine. This event is free to attend. Um, actually, last week, uh, Commissioner Harvey and Commissioner Rawls, as well as Mr. Suggs, um, should have received the Eventbrite registration form and flyers from the Regional Council. Um, it'll be done through Eventbrite, um, so it's a free thing for um, those of you that wish to attend. Um, but these are the groups that we're kind of targeting, that are those that should be there, um, county and municipality leadership, first responder leadership, community partners, but one group that you don't see there that you definitely should is school board officials. Um, addressing this issue early and addressing it in our schools is priority number <coughs> one. Um, but with that, this is the save the date. Um, I have mentioned it's March 31st at Wolf Golf Village. Um, it'll be from nine to four. Um, so we hope to see as many of you all as we can and really um, talk about this in a holistic um, approach. So, but with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Um, Commissioner Rawls. Do uh, regional council members need to register as well? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, you, you know, you, one in six uh, people have substance abuse disorders and that it encompasses every walk of life, young to old, professional to people just coming out of high school. Um, and it really is something that we've, we've got to wrap our heads around as a community and get the services in, in, in focusing only on Putnam County. We've got to get services inside of our county because right now we're dependent heavily on either the jail or outside, um, outside of our county services and other, I, I, I don't know how much of a burden we are on other counties, but it just seems to me like when one statistic you didn't say the other day when we were on the meeting that was brought up was 247. Uh, can you just talk about that? Yes, sir. So um, of April, looking at April of 2019 to April of, uh, or I'm sorry, April of 2020 to April of 2021, 100,000 people in the nation um, either died or had a, a direct result of the substance use. So if you kind of break that down, um, that everybody in the, the statistic um, Commissioner Rawls is re referencing is when we had the issue with the Max 8 um, jumbo jet, we had two of those planes crash. Um, two of those planes, roughly, they each carry about 270 souls. Um, that is what we're averaging in the substance use, is we're averaging that per day. Day. Um, so we would really be, if you, you know, with the comparative analysis, um, you know, there's definitely things that we should be doing differently. And we're really just starting to get the data in and there, you know, in the past there's not been a lot of uh, correlation between uh, caregivers, whether they're EMS, uh, first responders, law enforcement, um, hospitals, um, even nursing homes. And, and, and that, um, you know, people that are in treatment for legitimate reasons um, still overdose, right, wrong, or indifferent. So I, I, I think this is great. Um, hopefully this gets a much broader conversation going, but, you know, we still have a lot of work to do in Putnam County as well. So hopefully they can look at um, the distribution of the money regionally. Um, I believe you, you were, you came to the, the summit last July. So, you know, part of what um, Judge Janesk expressed in his frustration was the fact that we have so much money being spent but nothing's really being done here. So hopefully we can get those dollars focused more into Putnam County so we can make uh, more of an impact. But um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Look forward to this. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank, Tyler, you, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Ms. Julianne, are you warmed up? <laughs> we'll move down to Julianne Young, uh, Deputy County Administrator of Countywide Project Update. Good morning, Chairman. Thank you. I'm going to provide a snapshot update on numerous projects countywide this morning. The list is not intended to be all inclusive. is not intended to be all-inclusive list of every project or initiative underway by county departments is intended to give a cliff notes version of the project status for those of which have most significant impact or are, are most concern to our citizens commission or administration if you'd like additional details about a particular project or you'd like to see a project added to the list please let me know with that we begin with administration has a contract dat management database project underway administration and IT have developed a contract management database Final program testing and contract document uploads are in progress. The animal control project facility, core borings have been obtained, the analysis has been received. Commissioner Rawls requested and was granted approval by the BOCC to finalize engineering plans with the engineering firm he's working with. Once stamped and sealed, the plans are finished, staff can proceed to procure construction services. The Department of Health continues to work on COVID pandemic. We continue to offer all three COVID vaccines at the Department of Health, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. No appointment is required. Curative continues to offer COVID testing at the Husson site from Tuesday to Saturday, 9 to 5. Walk-ins are accepted until 1 p.m. After 1 p.m., an appointment is required. Information technology has a number of projects underway. The animal control application is nearing completion. Animal control is currently testing their new application developed by Putnam County IT for animal and call tracking. Beta testing has been delayed due to staffing changes at animal control, but should resume this month. Sanitation camera systems. Networking is working on complete overhaul of the camera system at sanitation and animal control. Expected completion is March 2022. 
The phone system E911 slash caller ID updates is in progress. Networking is working with the update to the E911 addresses and caller IDs for the phone system. Expects to be completed this month. Fairgrounds networking project is in progress. In preparation for the county fair, networking is assisting in expanding the wireless coverage for the grounds. The plans are in place and an installation is projected to be completed this month. Workstation deployments are in progress. 20 clerk PCs have been imaged and deployed successfully. An additional 20 are currently being imaged and deployed within various BOCC departments to replace aging and out of warranty systems. The library is at the end of the Melrose Library expansion. Window installation has begun. Electrical installation of fixtures, fans, and HVAC is in progress. Paint will follow. This queen does remain in place of the windows. Exterior door and hardware needs to be completed to secure the exterior. Demo of existing doors is tentatively planned to begin by the end of February. Remaining interior work is in progress and includes the countertops. Mason is scheduled to repair the brick wall when the demo of the doors takes place. Final inspections and punch list items are expected by the end of the month. Parks and Recreation has the Georgetown Park project underway. Staff continues to meet with the UF Extension Services that provided staff with conceptual drawings as well as suggestions for completing certain requirements that the county is attempting to complete to come into compliance with the Florida Communities Trust Grant. We will be having a follow-up meeting in April and a final plan is expected in June. Parks and Recreation has the Flora Home Park Historic Building project underway. The Historic Association has had a number of volunteers working on the last week framing the clubhouse front porch and handicap ramp. They have also installed part of the front porch decking. All materials are now in sight. They are waiting on the installation of the well and subsequent approval of the septic system. They continue to raise funds required for the completion of the building interior. Toward that end, they are planning and promoting Celebrate Trail Cycling event in Flora Home for April 9th and, I'm sorry, 8th and 9th and 100% of those funds raised will go towards the project. Parks and Recreation also has the Pickleball Court Project at the John Theobald Sports Complex underway. The St. John's River Pickleball Group has began the process of moving the volleyball courts at Triangle Park in order to prepare for the construction of the permanent pickleball courts. Public Works has the Fort Gates Landing, uh, Ferry Landing Project. Procurement for the remaining construction services needed to complete the rehabilitation is underway. Public Works has the Barden Bridge. FDOT inspections required to open both lanes of the bridge to traffic is scheduled to take place within the next two weeks. The project is scheduled to be completed by March 15th. St. John's Avenue resurfacing Palm Avenue to the CSX crossing at the Palaka Fire Department. Negotiations with the CEI consultant are underway. Construction is anticipated to begin by August of 2022 once the city's water line replacement project is complete in the area. County Road 310 Bridge Rehabilitation. The request for the board to approve the ranked list for CEI services is on this morning's agenda. If approved, Public Works will begin the negotiations with the top ranked firm. Final permitting activities are also underway. Septic to sewer conversion phase two. The contractor has installed 81 of the 89 grinder pump systems and 39 septic tanks have been decommissioned. Completion of the project is anticipated to be April of 2022. Septic to sewer conversion phase three. Public Works has obtained 26 of the 30 required utility easements and agreements needed to begin the project. Verbal commitment has been obtained from the remaining four property owners and Public Works is waiting for the required documents to be obtained. The anticipated start date is June 2022. Sawyer Salem at Bull Grain Drainage Project. Construction is substantially complete and the final punch list items are being addressed. The anticipated completion date is March of 2022. Dirt to pay for fiscal year 2020, the project is complete. Dirt to pay for fiscal year 2021, Public Works is in the process of obtaining the required contract documents prior to scheduling the pre-construction meetings. Construction is anticipated to begin in March of 2022. Dirt to pay fiscal year 2022, Survey work is nearing completion by county staff. Public Works is in the process of obtaining proposals for the design services for the related project. East Putnam drainage and flooded mitigation phases one through four. All contract documents have been obtained from the contractor awarded phase three. A pre-construction meeting is anticipated this week for construction to begin in March, 2022. Phase four, permitting and design activities are underway. Phase one and two are complete. St. John's Avenue drainage improvements, St. Uh, State Road 19 to County Road 309C. 
The completed bid documents have been sent to DEO for approval. Advertisement for construction services is anticipated in March 2022. Amendment 2 to the agreement with DEO has been executed by the board and sent to DEO for execution. St. John's Avenue Multi-Use Trail. Public Works is in the process of obtaining a time extension from FDOT due to design modifications requested by FDOT. Once the supplemental agreement has been obtained for the time extension, Public Works will present it to the board for approval. Countywide drainage improvements. <clears throat> Construction is underway. Point of Woods Trail, Ida, and Riverview Drive are substantially complete. Junction Road is scheduled to be completed by March of 2022, and the Edgefield Outfall is scheduled to be completed by May of 22. The anticipated completion date for all projects is May of 2022. South Palm Sidewalk, Drood Street to Silver Lake Drive. Construction bid documents have been completed and Public Works is awaiting approval by FDOT for the proprietary product certification needed for traffic control cabinet in the plans. Advertisement for construction is anticipated in March of 2022. <coughs> Saratoga Harbor Drainage Project, Gibbs Avenue. Value engineering discussions are underway. A final negotiated contract is anticipated to be presented to the board during the March 8, 2022 workshop for discussion. James A. Long and Jenkins Middle School safe routes to school. 100% of the design plans are under review by FDOT. County Road 315 resurfacing project. Negotiations with the engineer design consultant are anticipated to be completed by the end of the month. Upon completion, the negotiated uh, contract will come to the board for presentation. Port Buena Vista water wastewater treatment plant conversion and sewer main extension. The bid documents for construction services are underway and anticip anticipated to be advertised by the end of February. Paradise Point sewer system hardening and generator insulation. The funding agreement for construction services has been obtained by FDEM and is being discussed at this afternoon's workshop. Countywide guardrail installation repairs and replacements. The scope of the project is being reduced to bring the project within budget. Painting of the BOCC and Public Works building is underway. Countywide resurfacing for fiscal year 22. The bid documents have been completed and advertisement is anticipated in March of 2022. Countywide striping project, bid documents are underway and anticipated to be completed by March of 2022 for advertisement. East Palaka Septic to Sewer Project, Phase 4. This project has been selected to receive federal funds in the amount of $4.7 million through a cost reimbursement grant with FDEP. Public Works has sent FDEP all required documentations to complete the funding agreement. Once the agreement has been obtained, Public Works will present it to the board for discussion and approval. Sanitation has the cell 4A construction project underway. The cell 4A is nearing completion. The remaining tasks include installation of a rain tarp and finishing the pump systems. Once complete, they will apply for the DEP approval. That concludes my update. Okay, thank you, Julianne. Uh, commissioners, any questions in this project? There's a lot going on, on in Putnam County, thank you. Okay, we'll move down to the next item, which is public comment on agenda items. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It's not reasonable to expect that the board will engage in debate or deliberation on matters in which the board has received no prior uh, information on the agenda. Uh, please limit your comments to uh, three minutes. We would like for you to, to fill out a comment card, which are in the left and the right entrance and exit. Uh, so. I know anybody want to speak on agenda items? Okay. All right, I'm going to start. Ms. Karen Chadwick, I know you have to leave, so if you want to come up and speak on uh, biosolids. And if you'll set the clock for three minutes, and if you'll give us your name and address for the record, please. Karen Chadwick, uh, 179 West Strickland Road, Interlochen. Um, thanks for letting me speak now, because I do have to go get to work. This was something I was hoping would be on the agenda. Um, well, I saw in the paper there might be a proposal for, uh, I think it was a 90-day temporary ban on biosolid permits. Um, so I think you would get, if that did happen, I think you would get a lot of support. I was at the zoning meeting the other night. I couldn't stay for the whole thing. It was a, like a five-hour meeting, but I was glad to see the, the permit was designed or denied by zoning. Um, so I, I live on the west side. We have a lot of sand hills there. So I think most people that were here at that packed meeting were from the, you know, the, the east side, the local area where that um, permit was located. <clears throat> I live in the Silver Spring Spring Shed, and so I went to a lot of the, the 
basin management action plan meetings um, down in Marion County when they were talking about that. And there were some um, biosolid application sites that were discussed as being contributors to nutrient pollution. And um, I'm not sure about the Hawthorne formation, if that was under their, you know, their land. Um, um, but anyway, um, it has been known to contribute to nutrient pollution. And it's not just fertilizer, as everybody knows, there's a lot of other stuff in there. And so um, I just want to speak up for the west side. I, when this first was um, being talked about, there was some conversation about, or a comment about maybe there's a better place in Putnam County. Um, I don't know anybody in Putnam County that wants septage coming from, well, anywhere, but especially from another county where they can't apply it um, to their land. You know, we don't want it on our, our land going through our soils into our, our groundwater or running off in our waterways either. So I hope that um, ban does happen. Um, you know, we'll be watching for that. Um, please do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Uh, Mr. Ad Commissioner Abzak, you had a question? Yeah, so on this idea, I fully support you and I actually fully support a full ban everywhere in the county forever. Um, I don't want to waver on that in one second. Um, West Putnam is very important to this conversation because West Putnam is where we have a line of demarcation where part of West Putnam goes to the St. John's River Basin, the other part goes to Suwannee. That line goes right up through to Lake City. Um, that happens to be right just past where you live and out where I live. Um, I think it's very important where there was a proposed location is right near that line as well, the one that was supposed to be in Lake Susan. Um, in that area, that is right on that line too that goes from Suwannee and and uh, the St. John's. Um, a moratorium I don't think does anything except for pushes us out. If, we're, if our goal is a ban, we should just do a ban and start working on that now. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Rawlinson. I, I agree, I, I too am in favor of an all-out ban. I would not be in favor of a moratorium. Um, I was, I, I was gonna speak about this, but since it was brought up, it, it, it's not on the agenda, it should not have been brought up. Um, but I, I don't think that notifying the public through the newspaper is a way for us to um, put our, our uh, agenda together. But um, if we're going to have the conversation, I want to talk about an all-out ban, not a moratorium. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Turner. Um, this isn't on the agenda at the moment, right? Will you let right. her speak because she needed she to She needed leave? to leave, yes. Okay. Well, I'll save my comments for when we actually have it on as an item on an agenda. Okay. Do we have work room on the workshop for the first meeting in March to put this on? Whether it's a moratorium, a band, a modified we, band? Mr. Chairman, we can, uh, we'll add that as an item of discussion for the workshop for the uh, first meeting in March. Got an agreement with the commissioners? Very right. good. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, Bill Thompson, do you want to go ahead and speak? Um, on the MSBU. Good morning. <clears throat> Bill Thompson, 123 Kingfish Avenue, Placa, Florida. I'm the chairman of the St. John's Harbor Unit 3 MSBU. I came before you back in November, November 23rd, I believe, and addressed the new contract that had been let. Uh, the cost increases, uh, the funding that we have was not going to cover that. And I stated at that time that, you know, we're going to be broke. Well, today we're broke. We're bankrupt. So <clears throat> we can no longer fund our maintenance projects. We can no longer grade our roads. Uh, the price increases for the new contract for grading went from $275 to $1,250 per mile. And, you know, we're just looking for a path forward with that issue. Uh, we had an MSBU meeting last night, and <clears throat> the, the majority, as a matter of fact, it was pretty much 100% of the people that, in attendance would like to see a paving. Uh, we went through what's required, uh, and we've gone down this road several times. And... It's been, you've got to have 100% of people, you've got to have 60% of people, you've got to have, you know, and you're never going to align 449 partial owners, you know, to get to whatever that is. 
We understand now <clears throat> now that it's 50 plus one. Uh, in the past, we've had 50 plus one. Other people that voted. There are people that you're never going to be able to contact. They're never going to vote. So again, we're looking for opportunities. You know, what's our options? What's our path forward? So, but as of today, we can no longer do maintenance. Our roads are <clears throat> in very poor condition. Uh, under the new contract, we were hoping for great improvements. We haven't seen that. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I think maybe the earlier contract was doing a better job at a lesser price. So, you know, I, you know, again, we're just looking for solutions. Thank you. And Commissioner Rawls. So I'd, <clears throat> I'd ask them to come in and, and, and talk to us today. They're they're um, very frustrated. Um, one of the ladies in the room last night said it eloquently. She said that she's just flat out pissed off. Um, that, that was pretty much, I think, the, the consensus of everybody in the room. The answers, when they ask a question, they get one answer one year from one attorney. The next year, there's another attorney. They get a different answer. Um, and then, uh, I'm not throwing Mr. Commander under the bus here, but I called him last night for the meeting. And in fact, it's our responsibility to decide what the answer to it is. There is no minimum. We don't have to have 50 plus one. All we have to have is a board that's willing to make a decision um, to set up the MSV, whether it's for paving or whether it's for um, grading. But, um, and, and, and I admonished the group and I told them that they went 25 years, no price increases. And now it's a day of atonement. So the, the, the price- the, the citizens of the community did not set up that. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, is for 25 years, we knew that there was no price increases on the on the citizen side. That doesn't do the citizens any good. Now, now we now we're faced with a situation where you have about a 500 percent increase in cost, and the citizens are really upset about it, and they want to weigh the option of going to fully paved. One of the requests was whether or not the county could help participate at a 25 percent or higher level. Um, whether or not the county would be willing, you know, when when the numbers were being tossed around, it was based on a 15 year amortization. Um, I asked the question, could we go to 20? The answer is yes. Um, they're looking for answers. So I think that we really need to set aside time to have a workshop, not just to address the St. John's Harbor situation, but use this um, as a stepping stone to get to a policy that we can um, have etched in stone so when the citizens do come up, they're not getting wishy-washy answers from one, literally from one budget year to the next because their roads are in horrible condition. Um, they don't have any money, and we have rainy season coming up. Okay. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this has been a long time coming, and we have tried to set these rates at a, at a more, uh, what they actually cost rate, and you know, we've, we've talked about that. We rode your area. Um, the roads went out for bid. Your previous contractor did not want to bid those roads. It was too far out. Um, this might be one of those solutions, and I did talk to our public works director last week, where we have a policy to abandon that MSBU, and that might be a whole better solution. You got 4.1 miles out there. The county could take over the grading at a lot less than even your previous contract was. Yeah, it's my um, understanding from talking to the director yeah. last night. So, their now, cost is 125, ours is 1250. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's some issues there and, and we're still working through some of the other issues that we were trying to get to um, and, and we're trying to get there as fast as we can, but it's a very l laborious process, if you will, and you've been part of that. Do appreciate all your years of putting up with the MSBU and, and it wasn't your fault they weren't indexed, they weren't indexed from the beginning never kind of thought about that at that when back when they all started it wasn't a thought but as prices went up services went down and people weren't getting the services they were paying for and we're trying to rectify that situation um, but again yours might be there's two of them in the county there's one down south and there's yours that prices have went way up on them and it might be time that we really have a, a facility to look at removing those MSBUs out of there. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Adams, Act. So my understanding is, I wanna make sure my understanding is correct, that it's 50% plus one of respondents. It's I nothing. That, I thought that is how we changed the ordinance. I, that is how we changed the ordinance. 
Is that correct? That, that was my understanding when we rewrote that recently and we voted on it that it was 50% plus one of people responding to what we send out. If that's not what we did, we need to redo it because that's how I understood it. I'm getting shakes of heads of yes. I, I think you're right. I think, I think it's not a requirement. Right, right. No, I, I, I get it. I'm, and I'm not for doing it without the citizens' participation. And 50% plus one of respondents, I think, is a bar that a community should be able to set. If you can't set that, you know, if, so if you have 400 some lots and you only have 50 people respond, it only takes 26 people to be yeses. Okay. So I, I think that's a bar you guys can achieve just from what you've achieved in the past. And this applies to all MSBs, not specific to yours. Um, I'm all for the, the sharing. If an MSBU gets past that bar and us putting up 25%, we've <coughs> talked about that. I don't know if we made a official ordinance about it, but I think we talked about that we can do it case by case on the commission. Um, and I think we could have always done that, um, is my understanding from when we had that discussion. So I'm all for if an MSBU or a new group that wants to form an MSBU gets the approval and goes through all the voting and they get their 50% plus one and they come to us and say, hey, we're ready to do it 100%. Can you help with 20% or 10% or whatever? I'm all for us talking about it. How about 50%? I'm all for us talking about it once you get over that hurdle of the 50% plus one, okay. then coming to the board. All right, Commissioner Turner, then we'll move on. And I think that seems to be the issue right there. 25%, now we're at 50, and then it'll be 75, and why don't you just do it? We don't have to pay at all. I understand. Uh, unfortunately, if we set a precedence on this one, then we're <coughs> going to have to do it on all of them. Um, I think we need to do it on an individual basis. I think we need to look at them on an individual basis and we need to solve the problems. Like Commissioner Harvey said, I think we got two of them at the present time that are a real issue. Y'all's are a real issue and there's one in South Putnam. We do need to have a workshop on those, but we need to take them. We can talk about the overall thing if y'all want to, that's no problem. But we need to try to come up with a way that we can help solve these issues. I don't know if it would be that they pay the county to do it with their MSBU money, if we can do it for what the old contract was within their money that they're already raising. I think it would be a bad present precedent if we start taking MSBUs into the county's maintenance system yeah. because who do we, who do, we do next? Right. There's a <laughs> bunch of them in the county. It's not just y'all. There's a bunch of them. So who do you pick? So. You know, I think we need to take the problem that you're having and that other one and we need to address those problems because those are the two that seem to be far out of whack that they can't be paid for. Maybe it comes to addressing it a little bit. Maybe it comes to that we can do it in-house cheaper than we can than we can rent that particular one out and so they could take their MSBU of money and, and, and pay it to the county and the county could then go grade within the MSBU dollars that they already have. But then we need to probably take it one step further and make sure that once we, once we solve this, that the MSBU issue, if they don't get to go paving for whatever reason, the MSB issue next would be to raise the dues in there to where it will actually cover the fees. That's what MSBU is all about, where the citizens of the county don't have to pave everybody's road everywhere. So. There's good points and there's bad points, and I'm certainly willing to talk and try and address that issue and the other one we're having down there, and I don't really know what the answer is sitting here today, but I think we need to, to uh, start looking at that. I really do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner Adams, I Simply because we don't have the opportunity to speak as a group out unless we're in meeting. For before, as we lead into that conversation, some ideas that I have around that I'd like the other commissioners to think about is, I think if we do do a percentage of an MSPU road to pave or or even if it's a non-MSB road, but the people want to pave it, that uh, I think that percentage should come from our mileage. However, we, and I, granted, it's not a straight that we get each get two miles or every year, but that it should come out of our district's allotment towards better place plan. If we were going to do that, that's an idea. And then the other one is, um, I think we should base that, figure out a way to maybe think about basing that percentage based on the, the um, ratings of the road, just like we do for better place plan. Um, obviously, if a road scores a three, I'm not willing to share anything with that road, but if it scores, there's some ones out there. They they have graded, they have rated some of the MSBU roads. There's some that score in the high 20s that, you know, maybe in that one, we have maybe, seven to 30. Right. Maybe in in those instances, maybe we share a little bit more. I mean, have it based on that in some ways. Just food for thought for when we have this conversation. 
Thanks. some ideas that I've been kicking around in my head. Commissioner Rawls. What they're looking for is, is some, some relief in the very, 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 very near future um, because they have roads that, it's, this isn't just grading, they need, the roads need to be rebuilt in some areas. There's trees that need to be removed from right of ways and it's, it's a, more than just a, a grading conversation. So they're, they're looking for help and that was the reason why they wanted to come in today to talk to us about the possibility of putting something together sooner than later to discuss that. Okay, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I remember when, um, again, I first got here, we weren't going to pave any roads in the MSBU unless they all got paved. And that was just crazy talk. And <laughs> sound like Buddy got it there for a minute, crazy talk. But um, because I've got some out in my district that are 95 miles that will never see the whole MSBU ever paved. And my kids are their kids or their kids' lifetime. So that's not an option. So we started nipping off or we could start connecting some areas to pay roads to pay roads. And that's been very successful. I remember when M MSBU roads were not scored. So when they finally started getting scored, boy, they, that was all MSBU roads were, were leading the pack because they'd never been scored before. Um, so I think there, there's room for us to learn here I'm glad we have MSBUs. I couldn't imagine being a commissioner in my district without MSBUs and the citizen involvement in that. Um, but we're at, a, we're at a point now where you need help. The other one down south needs to be looked at. The other ones are pretty good right now within, but they're all pretty close together. So the economy of scale, one contractor or two contractors can pretty much go out there and, not, and work a week or two and get them all done. It's not that big of a job. But when they have to load up all their equipment and go to Boswick, that's where the expense started getting at. So there's, there's some learning stuff that we need to do. We also recently set a standard where mowing's going to happen, grading's going to happen, ditching, ditch work is going to get done, because we wouldn't have trees in the right-of-way had those things been done. But we've left it up to the citizens group to say we're going to put down Lime rock, we're going to put down this, where in some areas all, all they can do is put down clay. They and don't have the have money for that. You have to make the decision within the budget. It, it was, but it needs to be, you wouldn't have 10 inch trees had that been mowed one time. It wouldn't have taken place. So with that, with that thought, we've learned a lot. We're moving forward. It is a slow pace right now and it's painful, but we're going to find a solution. But um, I don't know when that solution is going to come. I know Mike and I talked last week, Mr. Troxell, of a solution that might could happen, but um, it's, it's, something's got to be done soon, and I agree. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can we put that on a workshop, the, uh, your transportation workshop in March, Mike? Can we do that? Okay. Second meeting in March. Second meeting in March. That'll be at 2, 2 p.m. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll close the public comment on agenda uh, items and then we'll move down to the consent agenda. Uh, commissioners, any items to pull? I'll start with Commissioner Rawls. I have none. Commissioner Harvey. I have none. Commissioner <coughs> Turner. None. Commissioner Adamsack. Um, item F. Item F. Okay, and I just have a question on item I. So, could I get a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we can approve the consent agenda items A, B, C, D, E, G, H, and J. Second. So, a proper motion by Commissioner Harvey and a second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, and okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, item F, human resources, uh, background screen policy update, uh, Commissioner Adamsack. So, one thing is clerical is F and G had each other's information, in, at least in my packet, with each other. It's kind of switched off, but that's irrelevant. But um, at first I was looking at it, I was going to leave policy, and then it had the, the information for the other. So um, I guess I just want to wonder, with, with, the, with the issues that we have in some areas, finding employees, in item F, when we get down to the elimination of people under... 435 is there any ability in a few of those areas 
to allow exceptions based on our review of that employee, that applicant, I mean. Yes. <clears throat> and, the, and can we pursue that potentially? I mean, it, um, here's the thing, when, we, when, the, when there was the petition for the state constitution to amend it to allow felons to vote, mm -hmm. at that time there was an estimated 3,400 felons in Putnam County. Um, those are potential employees. Obviously, there's some that obviously shouldn't be in certain roles, um, but with what the sheriff's office is trying to do, and obviously most of them aren't long-term felons and things like that, but I think we need to, to consider having some option where they may qualify for employment under some of these, and I just, maybe we should have that discussion before we approve this is, I guess what I'm looking at is some areas where we maybe can pull out, or is there a different way to address that? And, it, and any type of situation where the background screen would come back with somebody having a violation of 435 on there, um, we would look at the job relatedness. I mean, we would we would look at the final disposition um, of the situation, and then if it was a situation where um, we felt an exemption should be made, we would route it through county administration and Mr. Commando. Is there a way we can get that written into this? Because sure. I, I don't read that in here that okay. we have that process, I guess. So if we could if we could do that, I would just like to see if mm -hmm. we can have this item moved to another meeting just okay. so that we could write in some <coughs> allowment for staff to be allowed to look at individual basis to potentially, sure. if we have a good candidate who maybe did something wrong 25 years ago and right. is a valid candidate today and has been a good member of the community, then maybe that allows that person to be a legitimate applicant. Understood. Mm -hmm. Mr. Turner. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. We already reviewed this once previously and voted to send it forward. I have no issue with looking at it again, but I think we should take what we already approved and move it forward today and then ask for additional changes to be made at uh, Commissioner Adams' Act's request. That's just my opinion. Okay. Whatever's easier for staff, that's fine. Okay. okay. Can I we just do the approve back item F? Okay. With looking at that particular item and bringing back those changes to us at a later time? Well, if they don't, if y'all want. I mean, it's all right with me. Okay, but we'll move this forward, but you'll okay. you'll bring back the changes. Sure, I'll but, update it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that okay with you, Commissioner Adams? Um, when, when are we going to have that? When What's can, a good time? I can have it by the end of the week, absolutely. It's not it's so not we, a problem get, to add some more verbiage to the policy. we get that on a policy. workshop in, in March then? Sure. We'll look at the workshop uh, for March as uh, the quickest turnaround time, but our workshop for March is getting pretty loaded up with a lot of long discussions, but if we can get it on the first one of March, we'll certainly do that. If not, we'll get it back to the very first one that we can. Okay. All right. We got a proper motion. You made a motion on F. We got a second. Do we have a proper second? Say so what? I thought you seconded that motion. Mm -hmm. right. I'll second it. Okay, got a proper motion and a proper second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor and okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. I just have a question on uh, I with the um, scheduling of the public hearing. Do we have to have two? We, this one's scheduled for 930 on, I think, March 22nd. Um, do we have a second one at a 505 and give these people two opportunities to come and voice their opinion on the vacation of Bass Drive. We believe there's just one, Mr. Chairman, uh, at this time. If there's, if we change, if we'll do some research during, during the break today, and if there's any change of that, we'll let you know at the two o'clock workshop, but we believe there's only one required. Okay, I just wanna make sure there's people get notified again uh, in case there's any opposition on this, okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move approval on item I. Second. Thank you. Got a proper <clears throat> motion by Commissioner Harvey and proper second by Commissioner Adams Act. Um, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, and saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, we're going to take a three minute and four second break before we go to codes enforcement. <coughs>
down to um, codes enforcement, Mr. Thomas Moore. I'll start with item A, fine request. Reduction request, I guess. Address is 113 Sumter Road. Owner is William Heights. The violation was abandoned mobile home and care premises. Uh, the total cost of the original fine amount is $34,622.31. Total cost of enforcement action was $5,849. Property owners recently purchased the property. It is now compliant and he is requesting a fine reduction. If the board approves, we recommend the reduced fine to be paid within 90 days. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Harvey. I don't think the applicant's here, so I'll go ahead and make a motion that we reduce the fine down to $4,419 if paid within 90 days. Second. Okay, we got a proper motion to reduce the fine of $4,419 with it paid in with his ninth <coughs> day. We got second also. And the owner is not present, correct? Okay. All right, any further discussion, commissioners? Okay, all in favor of the saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Commissioner Adams, Act. I'm sorry. Yeah, for this next one, I just want to make it aware that uh, I do know the applicant. Um, she was a realtor in some transactions that I have been involved in, and it will have no bearing on my vote. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I don't believe she's in the audience either. So do we... Can we just move forward at this point? Because I'm ready to make a motion. Go for it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, on case 2018-00388, Joyce Davis, I move that we reduce the fine to 1129. That takes care of the 410 administrative monthly and 90 days to pay the fine. Say it. I got a proper motion and a proper second to reduce the fine to what was it, 1129? 1129.9. Okay. Yeah, 1129. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor. Okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thomas, that was the easiest one ever, wasn't yes, it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Tom, Tom, you must have been talking to Sarah uh, about how to get smooth things through. <laughs> how do I get this done? <laughs> okay, thank you. That's fun. Okay, we'll move down to item seven. Honorable Matt Reynolds, clerk of court. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I just want to thank the board and thank um, county staff for allowing um, my uh, my team my group to um, to use this uh, facility um, last week last Monday for our first um, leadership Academy meeting uh, went very well we've got nine <coughs> more weeks left of our training um, of that leadership Academy uh, it's gonna be a very good thing um, and I'm looking forward to hopefully um, continuing um, that, uh, that Leadership Academy and, and um, potentially bringing in um, other, uh, other leaders, other managers from other um, constitutional officers as well as the county, uh, county staff as well in the future once we get past this first uh, Leadership Academy. So it's going to be a very good thing. So thank you for, for letting us use the facility. And also um, the second thing, uh, the last week of March, that will be starting on, um, let's see, what day is that? March 28th, uh, Monday, March 28th, uh, we'll be doing our annual Operation Greenlight um, down at the courthouse. Uh, it runs for two weeks. And um, for those of you not familiar with that event, uh, the clerk's office, and it's really a statewide push uh, for all the clerks, where we offer uh, people who may have suspended driver's licenses uh, due to unpaid uh, traffic tickets or unpaid court costs, fines, fees, those sort of things, um, to come in, get on a payment plan, get their driver's license reinstated, and um, also the, the collection fees are waived if people come in during that uh, time frame. So we're going to be doing a, uh, hopefully a, a big push on social media and um, I'm just starting to mention it, but I'll make sure to mention it at, at future board meetings. Um, if, if all of you will, and your uh, communications out and around the county, let everybody know that they have this opportunity if, if you run into anybody with any unpaid court costs, fines, fees, or uh, suspended drive, 
driver's licenses, um, those sort of things. Mention that with, they have that opportunity coming up to save some money and, and get their driver's license free. So we had a slow week at work that week, huh? Yep. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Um, Commissioner Adamsack, do you have a, no, a comment? Okay. Okay, we'll move down to appointments. And before we get started, Sarah, you want to mention just you've handed out a, a list per district of the vacancies in our, our particular districts. And I assume the at-large is, you just added those so everybody would know which at-large are, are, are vacant. Okay, um, we'll start with Commissioner Adams Act. Any appointments? Um, I think we have to nominate Sam Carr, correct, as Waterways Representative. So I'd like to nominate Sam Carr as the Waterways Representative for Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. I'll second that. I don't think we have to second the nomination. And I guess if we're going to speak about it, one. Okay, we're Sam's gonna, probably yeah. one of the few yeah, people that's that. qualified to be that guy who's willing to. So. Yeah, call for question. Uh, nomination. Yeah, we, get, we have a nomination for Sam Carr for the Waterways representative. We've got a proper motion and a proper second. All right, under discussion. Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate saying aye. 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 And then I have one question on, I believe the Waterways and Trails Committee is, they don't have to live in the district, correct? Mm -hmm. So I would like to nominate, or I'd like to appoint Linda Kreider as my District 5 vacancy. It's an at-large you have to nominate. No, no, the, to my District 5 you have vacancy. A district 5 vacancy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so I'd like to appoint her to the District 5 vacancy. Okay, and that's to the Waterways and Trails? Yes, sir. And that's all I have today. Okay, let me ask you a question on, I understand that we have waterways and trails, Sam Carr, did you represent, nominate him for the waterways and trails or to the recreation board? To the Parks and Recreation Board. Okay. All right, that's he's fine. already on, he's on uh, waterways and trails. Okay. Well, he's gonna have to pick one or the other, ain't he? Okay, so basically all we're doing is making him today is making him a liaison between his waterways committee that he sits on and the liaison to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. Which he's currently been serving. I understand. Been okay, so it's not on two committees. He's basically the liaison of the other. It's on two. Okay, I'm good with it. I'm just trying to understand the... Thank you. Okay, so that takes care of So I get, does everybody have waterways representative Sam Carr under their parks mm -hmm. and recreation on this seat? Okay, I'm, I'm catching up. Okay, all right, Commissioner Turner. I have none to add today, sir. Okay. Commissioner Rawls. Um, at the last meeting, uh, I requested to appoint uh, Mary Hill to the uh, District 2 BPP. Um, he indicated that he would like to come off the AHAC. There was some concern about him being on the AHAC. So uh, that appointment would stand and then adding Jim Reed uh, to that as well okay so it would be uh, Mayor Hill to the BPP mm -hmm. and Jim Reed and Jim Reed correct and Sarah's working with him on his information okay so those are both your district two appointments correct yes sir okay I have no other okay Commissioner Harvey I am presently, I am working on getting all mine filled. Uh, I am interviewing people now and they're filling out their thing. But on the Zoning Board of Adjustments, I'd like to appoint Amy Stanley to serve on that as that my District 4 appointment. Okay, so that needs no, okay, so that's a district appointment, okay. All right, and I have none at this time, so, all right. Okay, we'll move down to the next item of business, public comment on miscellaneous items. This portion of the meeting of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It's not reasonable to expect that the board will engage and deliberate on matters which the board received no prior information. 
So we have any public comment on I think they already made it during I think they time. did, yeah. Okay. All right, we'll move down to uh, County Administrator. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, Board. I uh, just want to uh, have a brief conversation. We did an addendum late yesterday afternoon for our uh, workshop this afternoon due to some information we received late in the week, last week, and more today. Uh, it's a discussion uh, that will uh, revolve around the rail spur that we have out at the Port Authority and our assist our ability to assist one of our uh, taxpayers out there, uh, Veritas Steel. So we'll bring that to you at the 2 o'clock with uh, any further discussions at that time. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my comments. Thank you. Thank you. County Attorney, Mr. Rich Commando. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to advise the board that I am seeking an executive session at our next meeting on March 8th. Um, traditionally, we try to do these scheduled out, but because of the other attorney's um, schedule, I'm asking if we could do that first thing at the meeting. So we'll convene our meeting and then adjourn into the executive session to discuss a workers' comp claim issue. And that concludes my report. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner comments. I'll start with Commissioner Rawls. I just want to say that <clears throat> I had a really good time going to Daytona this weekend and got to relax a little bit, watch the Daytona 500. And it was really interesting to watch, you know, when you, you go to an event like that and you've been, I've done, been there since the uh, late 1980s and watching this thing evolve. And I was thinking about our air show that they have at the Placa Airport. And, um, I really think that we should reach out to the folks that put that on. There, uh, there should be a way that we can help support that financially. It just seemed like it, every year it gets bigger and bigger, and um, they're going to run up against that same brick wall that everybody else does. When it comes, you know, they're, they they corrected the parking. It seems like this year they they uh, had a lot of volunteers, but it seemed like they sure could have used a lot more. But uh, I'd like to see if we could extend a uh, hand of friendship out to the city at some point, see if we can help participate in that because that really is turning into a nice event. Okay. All right. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do want to say um, Bassmasters was here last weekend. What a wonderful event for the county. Um, Chamber did an outstanding job, as always, but uh, I was able to meet a lot of the bass fishermen out in the community. I remember uh, I was out at Publix and I was talking to one uh, bass master with his family, his mother and father. <coughs> and, they just felt like Putnam County was the best place they've been treated at. They were actually going to start looking for some property around here, possibly having a second home. Uh, they just really loved the community and loved the, the way everybody helped. And uh, a lot of people got up early. A lot of people parked cars. Uh, people did what they could. And this community came together. And you cannot buy that type of uh, advertisement. It's too expensive want to reach out to and we've had a lot of people pass away recently but I had a friend Vic Gagney Mr. Troxel you'll remember we stopped over in uh, Mr. Gagney's house not too long ago where that bull green area is mm -hmm. told you I had to go see him before he died at 102 I didn't know he was going to die uh, 10 days later but um, he did and uh, he's 101 years old and he just passed away and earlier it was mentioned about the moratorium on biosolids I'm glad that we're going to have that discussion. I did want to talk about a moratorium. I did send that to our administrator uh, so they wouldn't be caught in the dark about that. But if we're going to do it at the next workshop, uh, I'll be glad to wait on that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Uh, Commissioner Adamsack? Yeah, again, there, there are several activities in the county this past weekend. There's several more in the upcoming weekends. Um, this is an exciting place to live and raise your children. Um, same thing when I was at the Bassman, I, I was there for a little bit on Thursday and Saturday. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make it the last day that we were going to try, and it just didn't work out with the kids the way they're acting and having fun, I guess, is the way I'll put it. Um, but I'll say this, I, I got a chance to talk to a couple of the anglers, and uh, I think that, that it was sincere, that especially on Thursday, that they are very excited about here based on the number of people that we put out there in the crowd on the off nights. And um, it was kind of, they talked about it from the, up there on Saturday as well, while they were getting presented their stuff. But there, there was a couple that I had the opportunity to meet that actually were 
they were just surprised. They were like, usually on Thursdays, there's like three people, and we just go through the motions for the TV and answer a couple questions and, and do our thing. And, and that was pretty jam-packed every, every night. And we watched some of it on TV because our, our kids somehow got interested in it, and I, I didn't expect that. Um, so they were actually watching the fishermen as they fished, and I just think it is important to, to promote all these different events. I think it was a little bit unfortunate that the air, the flying got pushed back to that same week. But uh, when that is independent, it, uh, that's, that's a great show as well. So, um, you know, we had the Bluegrass Festival at Road Heavers. Um, there's several things in the beginning of March. There was, a, there was a jazz band. I wish I could have made it down there on Lake Stella. I think they're going to do that again on a regular basis is what I saw posted. Um, I love jazz music, so I, I look forward to that as well. There was a jazz thing at the Arts Center that, unfortunately, on Valentine's Day we couldn't make it. But uh, some great things going on very diverse things like if you like different types of music you know everything so um this is the place to be thank you okay thank you mr adams Act. commissioner turner uh, yes uh, mr chairman i uh, would like to request that that we place on workshop uh, if we have the time i'd like to see it on the, the uh, next workshop i'd like an update on the software from the building department and um, also, some possible solutions to some of the issues that are coming uh, with the building department. Um, I know that last year there were some issues with long lead times on uh, permit review, on plan review, and they haven't been able to hire. So we authorize them to hire somebody. That individual is not available, it seems like, or whatever. It just seems like with the amount of permits that people are pulling nowadays, it's pushing us further and further behind. It's not really the problem of the building department itself so much as it's just the, um, the volume of permits they're having. So I don't know exactly what the, what the answer here is. I really don't. I mean, I wish we could get the plans examiner that we authorized last year, but evidently that's turning out to be quite the issue at the moment. So. Um, I, I, uh, I was hoping that maybe we could brainstorm because the five of us can't talk about this except in a meeting if we could come up with maybe brainstorm with some suggestions from Mr. Cialfi and the administrator Suggs or whatever and see if we couldn't come up with something to help to help with some of these. There's got to be some kind of solution here that would help some. I just don't know what that solution is at the moment. Maybe we could come up with something because there are some issues over there for sure. So if uh, we could place that on that agenda, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other comments? I'd just like to address real quick. Okay. You're, you're absolutely correct. The, it, it, and it really doesn't matter what sector you look at. We're challenged as a, as a country right now trying to get people to work. Um, I don't think it's the fact that there's something wrong with Putnam County. I think that there just aren't people available and uh, that, that are qualified and you can't just take someone off the street. But, um, I think it's something we're going to have to live with for a while. I don't know that we can change our processes at all because a plan review has to be done systematically. And, you know, if, if you're missing something, they send you a letter, you got to respond. It takes, it slows things down, but I'm, I'm in it just like you are. And we're experiencing the exact same, um, uh, pain, but I just I, I tell our customers ahead of time it's going to be a six to eight week process to get on permits if we well, get it right the first time. And I try to do the same, but it's kind of hard when the same guy's got a project going in in Clay and the same guy that's got a project going in St. John's and they get a permit in 12 uh, days and three weeks later we're not done with permit with. A I'm answering the review. same questions. I know. So I'd, it's not like. Other, everybody's not dealing with the same flux and everybody else and I know that they're trying to fix this by trying to find somebody else so I'm really trying not to be critical of the building department at this juncture really not um, it's just that and we just went through a software switch over which messed them up <laughs> you know because for two or three weeks they had some issues there but they came through it I think they've pretty much worked their way through it and so it should help make things better too so I would just like and up I, know, I, I agree with you. I think we should just have maybe some possible solutions or something. I don't really know what those solutions are. I just 
seem to think, well, I understand. If it then, takes money, we throwed money at them for the four years that I've been here. We throwed money at them every year, yeah. and we're still having issues. We tried to throw money at them last year, letting them get another plans guy, and they couldn't find one. So I, I really, I'm really at the point I really don't know how to fix this. I really don't, but I'm also at the point where if surrounding counties can do it, then we ought to be able to do it too. We just got to figure out how. And that, I, I can tell you this, and not being critical of any surrounding counties, and I won't say which ones, but I can turn a set of I can turn an identical set of plans into three counties. One being Putnam, I'll get a permit really quickly. But I can also tell you that when Putnam reviews it, the comments that we get back, we miss things. The other counties are missing things that Putnam's not missing. I'm not saying that we need to overlook that. I think we're doing a great job, but I think that's the, is there, some of these guys are rubber stamping stuff so fast that I'm stepping on the jobs and questioning what our people are doing, and they're saying, well, it was approved. Nobody's <clears throat> perfect. Right. I'm just telling you, if they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> we just got to figure out how. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Commissioner Adams, Zach. Is it possible if, as part of that conversation, if it gets added, can we get the the job the job postings out there i can see it but can we get a comparative salary for the surrounding areas for that p type position and sometimes in, in business and even government when you're looking to fill a spot that there is no qualified candidate sometimes you have to entice a candidate and maybe that needs to be part of the discussion but i think we need that information in order to decide if that's part of the discussion so if, at least i if I, I as a commissioner can get what that current what we're saying we want the position to be and where its pay scale is and benefits scale is and then what some surrounding areas however that goes or if there's an average for the state Sarah I don't know what kind of data you can get but any supporting data to comparatively do it I'd appreciate having that before that meeting yeah especially if we could get it comparative we already have the amounts we pay y'all send that to us like right. two weeks ago but if we could get that compared to St. John's and Clay maybe that's the problem we're just so far off that we can't get there and we'll just have to do something about it. I don't know, but we've got to do something before it gets cri more critical than it already is. Yeah, and we're unfortunately in, probably in a situation in this particular role where we're gonna have to do what other counties have been doing to us for decades. We're gonna have to steal an employee. There is an option that I, I had a real brief discussion with the building official on that would be using somebody like Universal Engineering or Aegis or one of those guys that um, as a uh, third party reviewer um, I don't know where it puts him or us as a county uh, but that isn't that is an option a lot of people are doing that yep. and so that's why I want to talk about this at workshop to come up with those type of options because we can't just continue con going like we're going knowing that there's an issue yeah. we need to try to come up with a, a viable solution to move us in, in a better direction than where we are yeah. uh, so and I think we're moving there I just think we need to push it a little <laughs> Okay, you want to put that on the end of a workshop. Um, and we also, I wanted to bring up the discussion, do we need to have another ARPA meeting to finalize the remaining monies that we have? Um, so if we went to a third Tuesday, we could have the ARPA and we could have this discussion also, uh, unless you just want to piggyback these on a, on the end of a. This one here I don't think is going to take very long. The building thing, I really don't. It's a matter of them coming up with some solutions. We find it viable or not. Uh, third Tuesday, I'm a, in March. Have that conversation today with building? No, sir, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Siafi is no, not in not, today. Not enough time. Uh, and how, how big is the agenda getting for the 8th? I also think John, in all fairness, John needs a little time to come up with some solutions and not just be put on the spot. I'm really not trying to do that. And, you know, I know they've been talking about different ones. And, and so I, I think it, I don't think it'll take a lot of time, but I think they're going to take them some time to prepare for that. Um, what, what date, what date did you say? Third Tuesday, be the 15th of March. What time would you like? Nine. Okay. 13th of March. 15th. At 9 o'clock? March. At 9. And then we'll talk about the remaining ARPA money also. Mm -hmm. And maybe could we get the uh, that brief thing on the, the HR? That mm -hmm. should be quick as well. Okay. You want to throw the MSB in 
MSB you in there too, or wait for transportation? Oh, you're getting crazy. No. <laughs> no, I think we wait for transportation. Transportation. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Chairman, uh, what I'll do is after this meeting, if you and I can sit for just a few minutes, we'll put a list of items together for that special call meeting, and we'll make sure that we don't miss an item. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And speaking of meetings, uh, I know that Commissioner or former Chairman, past Chairman Harvey, has been trying to get. Uh, a schedule together to meet with the city of Palatka and so I have also so um, we understood they were going to send us some dates then they asked us for us to send them dates so we've been going back and forth so I think Sarah sent out uh, dates of April 7th which I think is a Thursday and April 18th um, I actually have a several so, group I, down. so I think the 7th it seemed like that was the best date so is that agreeable with everybody mm -hmm. sure. At uh, five o'clock, and we'll meet here. Okay. Okay. Um, Administrator Suggs, how would the board get? Would they just send Sarah the anything that they wanted to talk about, and then I want some convers. I'll have conversations with Mayor Hill about we want we want to put together an agenda before this meeting and have it out in time for the commissioners to review it on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the uh, commissioners can uh, certainly get with, with Ms. Sarah and we'll put an agenda item together or an agenda together. I would certainly recommend that we give a, uh, uh, the, the city a date for which that we need to have our items in so that we can uh, make sure that we get an agenda put together and publicly advertise it in, in time so each one of the commissioners will be aware of the items that are on there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, my next item is uh, Saturday, the, um, the 26th at 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to finally be able to uh, have the dedication and the unveiling ceremony of the, the signs that the county made, and we are going to dedicate Memorial Highway, which is Old 17, which runs from Junction Road in Crescent City to New 17. It runs through Long Station in honor of A. Philip Randolph. That's at 11 a.m. at Eva Lyons Park. Uh, I've got a copy of the invitation. I think y'all all received one uh, from Miss Angel Duke. Uh, there will be some uh, a reception afterwards on Central Avenue right at the corner in the A. Philip Randolph uh, Gallery after that. So everybody is invited, but I wanted to mention that. Um, and also I mentioned Clarence Pooh Bear Williams. Um, his funeral will be at 2 p.m. Saturday at Wilcher Stadium, Wisnoski Field uh, at 2 p.m. And then tomorrow evening, there will be a memorial candlelight service at the same facility, the football field, uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. I believe they're having another one today at 2.22. Okay, that's what I wanted to talk to y'all about this. They're trying to put this together in, in short time, so it's, I guess, is an emergency item. Um, as most of you know, Clarence Pooh Bear uh, Williams was number 22 and they felt that the city of Crescent City along with the high school and they're asking some support uh, from the school board and then the county commissioners uh, to for Crescent City is putting together a proclamation uh, stating that 222 would be Clarence Pube, Pube Williams Day in Crescent City and they just want our support. Um, at this time, I don't have a copy of the proclamation, but they would want me to sign it just as if the county is agreeing in se uh, supporting that. Absolutely. You want a motion for that? <clears throat> Do we need a motion for that? So moved. Second. Okay, we've got a proper motion and a proper second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of next saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a uh, game feast this weekend, so I will not be able to attend that. Yes, yeah, a busy day. I'm going to try to do that too. So, and the funeral and, and the A. Philip Randolph. Um, okay. Um, that's all that I have. Is there any further business to come before this meeting, this board? Okay, we have a 2 p.m. Uh, transportation meeting. We stand adjourned. <laughs>